Hey guys, Lindsay here with Sunshine Canine Training. Today I'm going to talk about the micro educator and how we set it up for all of our board and train clients. This collar is great for tiny dogs. So we have a lot of dogs that come in that are small, Jack Russells, Yorkies, Chihuahuas, Shih Tzus, dogs like that. The smaller, the smaller ones, usually under 20 pounds. Um, the receiver is lighter and a little bit smaller. So I'm going to talk about how to charge the unit how to turn it on and off and how we set it up and then some features that the micro educator has. So we have the box. The micro educator is similar to the mini educator, the ET300, but it's a micro educator. And if, as you see, it goes a third of a mile instead of the typical half that the other ones come with. Uh, we have the manual, which is super important. You get a little bag of tools in there that most people don't need because I set it up for you. The original contact points that come with it, the remote itself with the lanyard that I've attached to it, and then the receiver box. Um, and this is something that I customize for all my clients based on their particular dog. And then these are the contact points that we have on this particular collar. We do this with most of our collars and of course the charger. This is our micro educator and we set it up for specific dogs. So this dog needs the receiver to be flipped sideways because that's how it fits. We like our, the, our buckles to make it easier to put them on and then the bungee to make sure that they're snug and we also put titanium contact points on most of our client dogs, especially ones with white short fur because they tend to have um, issues first. Uh, guys, when you're using the remote collar, make sure that you're rotating them every four hours on your dog's neck so they're not sitting in the same spot constantly. For starters, the first thing you need to know how to do is charge the unit. Most of the units, when you get them in the box, they come with a charge already. But with each unit, they're similar to the micro educate, the mini educator where you flip up this little rubber piece and the plug goes into that little spot there. Okay, so that's the receiver um, and it plugs in. It will turn green when it's fully charged, red while it's charging. And then the remote, same thing. Flip open that little gasket thingy, plug it in. It'll turn red while it's charging, green while it's when it's fully charged. Um, usually I find people have to charge them every other day or every two days. It just depends on how often you're using it. Um, it is a waterproof system so long as those little gasket things are closed when you're done and that the contact points are tightened. Once your unit is fully charged, you'll need to know how to turn the unit on. So the receiver for this collar, as you can see, it, I have it on a little different. So usually when, they, when the receiver comes in the box, the strap is going this way, but this dog is so small that we have to do it this way in order for the collar to actually fit on her neck. Um, so you'll see on this collar, there's a little red dot here. This dot is actually a magnet and you'll see an identical red dot on the side of your remote. So these two little magnets, what you do is you touch them together really quick. You see the green light that just came on and then the receiver starts to flash green. You see that little flash there. There it goes. So it flashes green to let us know that it's on. It'll start to flash orange and then green and then orange and green when it needs to charge. It's running low and it'll flash red when it's about to be dead. Um, you turn it off by doing the same thing, magnet to magnet, red to red. And the unit, as you saw, my, my hand kind of glowed red for a sec. You don't have to press and hold. You just have to touch it quickly and then it'll flash. And then you wait and make sure that it's off when it's not blinking anymore and it's off completely. Um, this doesn't have to be on in order to turn this on. It's just a magnet. If you store it in a drawer with other magnets, be mindful of that because um, you might wear the battery out. Uh, to turn the remote on, you see the screen is blank here. To turn the remote on, we turn it around and there's a little thing here that says on, off, and light. It actually has an L on it on this big button on the back here. So we press this button, the, the L button, you press that and hold it until it turns on. The screen will turn blue and have a little display on there. Sometimes it's hard to see. Do, 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 do. Well, it says 1D, 0C. So that's, that's what the screen displays. 1D means one dog. We can also set this up as a two dog system, but this is just a one dog system. And zero is the number that if we push one of these buttons, that's a number that will coincide, um, so nothing happens. Um, and then C stands for continuous, meaning if we press and hold one of the stim function buttons, it will stay on until we turn it off, until we let off that button. You turn your remote off by doing the same thing. You press and hold 
that L button, Let's make sure I'm not confusing anybody here, press and hold it. When you release it, it should be turned off, it takes a couple seconds. Um, so make sure that you turn on your receiver and the remote before you put it on the dog because it can be difficult. If you end up having to set up your collar like this, it is a little bit more difficult to turn it on um, when it's faced the other way and the strap is going this way. It's a lot easier because that's how they were initially designed, but small, tiny dogs require a little bit of tweaking. So to make it easier to turn on, you just fold that back and red to red, turns green, cool. So now my unit is on and flashing. Make sure it flashes, it's flashing, there we go. So after we get it on the dog, um, check out the fit video. Our other, our other videos show how to properly fit an e-collar. Um, it's the same across the board for all the dogs. They make, it needs to be snug on the dog's neck, either at four o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, or two o'clock. Um, so on those muscle groups, if it's underneath their neck, it doesn't function properly. Um, that's what a bark collar is for, um, because a bark collar senses their vocals, but these are not bark collars unless we want them to be, because we control these. Um, so they have to be snug on the dog's neck in order to work properly. My good test is if you move the receiver and the dog's neck moves with it, that's a good tell that it's, that it's tight enough. If you move this box and it like slides freely around your dog's neck, it's probably too loose and it's not going to be effective. It is only effective when these two metal contact points actually make contact with your dog's skin. So for all of my board and train clients and all my one-on-one -on -one clients, I set the remote up a specific way because that's how we use it. So we set it up so that the remote says 1D and 0C on it. The C is for continuous mode, so when we press and hold the buttons, they stay um, they stay on until we let go of the button. We also set it to tone, which is this little T button right here on the side of the remote. So when I press this button, it makes a noise. I can press and hold or I can just tap. If you press and hold on this collar, on this unit, when you press and hold, the number that's displayed on the screen is the number that will activate on the collar once the noise stops. So I'll show you an example. So it's on four, it's not on a dog right now, so it's not gonna do anything at all. But when I press and hold, once the noise stops but the light is still on, the stim function will activate. So I'll show you guys that. Now it's stimming and it'll stim until we let go of the button. Okay, see that? Okay. The other two buttons on the side of the remote are both have S's on them for stim or shock, however y'all want to call it. Y'all y'all say what you want. Um, we know what we're doing with these, you know, so be real about it, guys. We can whisper and we can shout, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the black button, the black S button, will stim whatever number is on the screen. So it's at four right now. That means that whenever this lights up, it's on a four. If I turn the dial up, which is this thing on top, this little turny thing, it's at 18. If I press the black button, it'll be 18 on the receiver. The red button, back it down so y'all can see the difference here. The red button, you see how it displays as a one right now. The red button will jump whatever number is on the screen plus five. So you see it says six on there now. So if I press that, it's like a quick jump. So that's a good thing to do if you wanna like set your correction level. Um, but because every dog is different, we tend to not even use the red button at all. But I like to tell folks what it does. There is a vibrate feature on this remote. I talk, I talk to everybody about why I don't use that feature. I don't use that feature because our dogs usually can feel it way sooner, like single digits where we can't even register the feeling on the remote. Um, so when we use vibrate, it's almost like a serious correction and it's not humane like everybody thinks because people traumatize their dogs by using vibrate on an e-collar. Um, so we don't use vibrate at all. If you find that your e-collar starts to vibrate instead of beep, then you messed with the buttons a little bit. You can refer to the owner's manual and it'll tell you how to set it back to tone. It's really easy. You dial it down to zero and you press a combination of two buttons. Um, but I set it up for you and it's pretty hard to mess up. Um, but if you do that, just give me a call. I'll talk you through it. Um, it's no big deal. Actually, eCollar Technologies has tons of videos out on how to use their systems and the micro educator is one of them. It's pretty much the same exact thing as the mini educator, except the magnets in a different spot. It's just a smaller remote. That's it. Um, 
There's another cool feature on this that I like for nighttime. It's the light feature. So there's two little lights on this collar because it's so cute and small. And the way to activate that is that L button on the back. So you just tap that button one time and then it creates a strobe feature on your collar. So now that's just strobing. So if your dog's out pottying, you got a little strobe light and that's kind of nice. Um, and now if you want the light to be on all the time, you just press that button again and it'll be on all the time. So it's a really cool feature. Um, also, if you don't have a flashlight and the power goes out, you got a cool flashlight. It's actually really powerful. Um, you can turn that off again by pressing it a third time. So one time activates the strobe, two times activates the flashlight and three times turns it off. And if you press and hold that L button, you'll turn your remote off. So make sure your remote's on if you're going to use it. Um, that's about it for these collars. Uh, all of my board and train clients get a walkthrough on how to use these things, but you need to know how to turn it on. You dial it up with this right here, this little feature right here. Okay, so let me show, show it to y'all close. It's intended for right-handed people. You dial it up by going, moving this, this cute little button here. Uh, now, if you find that your number won't change on the screen, sorry, it's hard to see if y'all can see the screen because it's so, it's so bright. Uh, neighbor dogs are barking and Leo's barking. Um, so if you find that your number stops changing, what that means is you pressed and held this down and you locked your number. So when you press and hold the top button here, because it does go up and down, when you press and hold that top button, it locks it, which means you can't you can't change the number anymore. So if you put it in your pocket, sometimes that happens. Um, I don't have any reason to lock the remote because our numbers are ever changing, especially when we're outside. So you unlock it by pressing and holding it again, and then the light turns off, and then you can go back to dialing up and down on the remote. Guys, remember that when you're using an e-collar, uh, it has tons of uses. If your dog went through a board and train, they know pressure on, pressure off, because we taught it that way. Um, please don't just get one of these and start pushing buttons. That's not how it works. Um, we have very specific protocols when it comes to these collars. Um, we set them up a certain way for a reason. Um, we don't use certain features for a reason, you know, so make sure that if you're using one of these and you're not one of our clients that you're seeking help from somebody that is savvy in using these systems because this system is different from all the other systems out there, you know. Um, they all have the same concept. You push a button and something happens on a receiver, but the delay in that remote, um, so like when I push this, I know that as soon as I push it, it's active. it activates right away, right away. There's no delay there. Um, there are a lot of systems out there that have like a five second delay where I push this and then the dog doesn't feel it for five seconds. Like that's awful, I don't like systems like that. Um, so we really like these systems a lot, it's our favorite one. This is what we recommend everybody use if you're gonna use remote collars because um, there's all different kinds. So they, this is for tiny dogs, they have one for medium, like average dogs and then they have stronger ones that are um, that go more than a mile um, and those are really great too. Um, we've got those for our hunting dogs so great tool to use. Lots and lots and lots of training involved. It's not just pushing a button to get your dog to listen to you guys. You have to keep that in mind. Um, but if you have questions let us know but that's just the breakdown on how to use it. Uh, finding your dog's working level, your dog changes. The numbers are going to change so don't get married to a number. If you're like oh five worked today but five isn't doing anything, so I tried six and it still doesn't work. I tried seven and it still doesn't work. Guys, there's a hundred numbers on this system for a reason. Dogs change. Dog, dogs' excitement levels change and the way that we communicate with them needs to change when their mindset changes, so keep that in mind. Lots of training involved in this stuff. Um, you shouldn't just buy one and slap it on and start pressing buttons, guys. You gotta, you gotta train your dog to understand what these buttons mean and what that pressure means. All right, I hope this was helpful, and if y'all have questions, drop them in the comments.